Well, Doc, will I make it? I'm afraid the wounds are fatal. Tell him the truth. We might not be able to save his life, but he can be reborn. It is true. With your unique Godmaster abilities, there is the chance to repurpose your powerful components into a bold new form. But I must warn you, the Ginrai we know would cease to exist if this is to be my end. Allow me to be reborn so that I may fight Destrons again. Show him the schematics. We can do it. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. If this is how I may be of greatest service, make it so. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Victory! Leo! For some strange reason, part of me is actually more excited about this guy than I am about Star Saber. Ugh. So for those not in the know, that cold start might have seemed a little bit strange, but believe it or not, that is the origins, more or less, paraphrase, some artistic license taken, of the main man, Victory Leo. Alright, look, before we get too much deeper, I'll give you a quick lowdown on why he's so mother flippin' cool. So basically, before Victory Leo was Victory Leo, he was the super powerful Autobot known as God Ginrai. So basically, Ginrai was a transactor body that was intended for Optimus Prime, was found by a kid named Ginrai instead, who used the, you know, God bracelet thingies to become Power Master Prime, essentially, but, you know, known as God Ginrai there. Anyway, through a whole bunch of shenanigans, the transactor body ends up gaining its own sentience with a persona based off of Ginrai and goes on to, you know, defend the galaxy. What we get in Transformers Victory is Ginrai is not Supreme Commander of Sector 1 anymore. He's kind of handed the job over to Star Saber. He kind of got voted in, essentially. He was happy for him. They were buds. All was sweet. Uh, things were going south for Star Saber a couple of times. Ginrai shows up in his God Master mode and ends up laying the pain down on Deathsaurus and Leo Kaiser and whatnot. But he gets hit with the metal destroying cannon and his body is no longer viable. So, knowing that, you know, he's kind of trapped, not being able to move and not be of any use in the war, he manages to find out from Wheeljack and Perceptor that there is a process where his super powerful Godmaster components could be reused to make a new robot that would have the ability to merge and power up Star Saber. So he makes the ultimate goat big boy pants sacrifice and agrees to become this new entity. What's really cool about it is it's not just Optimus in a new body, by becoming Victory Leo, Ginrai essentially dies and is reborn. He has Ginrai's memories, but he's not exactly the same because of the new body, which they soon find out when he's like beast mode overpowers him. And you know, he starts off, he's not quite the Ginrai that everybody knew and loved. And you know, it's a whole arc for him to find his place and work out where he fits in this new world. But God, it's cool. He really lays the smack down on everyone, and that power-up is phenomenal. So, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything you need to know about Victory Leo. Back to the show. So, straight off the top, I love him. It's such a Japanese G1 robot design. He's starting to head it towards that kind of, you know, Super Sentai almost look. I do have some issues with his proportions. They're not coming off too bad on camera, but in person, his lower half feels like it's about a half a size too small. Especially because his head feels almost a little bit too big, so I feel like, you know, if that's the proportion being set through there, these are some very stumpy legumes. You can forgive it a little bit because, you know, he does have to triple change and combine, you know, to be a robot power-up, but um, it doesn't quite bring the gravitas that I feel the character warrants. I do think the black on yellow looks great with the white accents and the red. He's just a really cool looking bot. The gold on mine is in pretty good condition. There are a couple of, you know, flecks of dust and stuff in it. But honestly, I don't mind that too much because if y'all know me, you know I like a battle damage bot. I also feel like given how much he has to do, it's not a particularly kibbly robot mode. A lot of the time base modes, you can see the beast all over it, but because he's a robotic beast, it's all kind of tucked away and you forgive that big cat hat because it's part of the original design, right? Screen accurate weirdness gets a full pass. 
At least it does in my book. So I think his articulation is actually fairly reasonable considering everything he has to do. That head is kind of, sort of, not really on a bowl joint, but it, it's got a little bit of wiggle and flex to it, so I don't mind. Really, I guess it's just he can, he can turn it and there's a little bit of wiggle wiggle along the way. His shoulders would go all the way around if not for his wings. You can't, you know, get them out the way without bending his arm out a bit, but oh well. The shoulders also hinge out from inside that pauldron. That's a design cue that I always love. I wish it was on Star Saber, right? Elbow has a lot of clearance. You can get it well past 90, which is sick. And then he does have a wrist swivel, but it's, it's tight. It's tight like a tiger. Oh yeah, and a bicep swivel. Right, there's no waist swivel, which is a real bummer, but he does have to split in half whew, right down the middle. So that might have been, I don't know, tough to do. I think you could have pulled it off if you really wanted to, but here we are. His hips are on a super tight ratchet and the skirt panels move with it, which is something I always love. You can bring the legs out to about there, but those um, those hip cannons will limit the articulation a little bit. You know, I guess that's the trade-off when you decide to become a hip shooting kind of dude. You get a thigh swivel and a pretty reasonable bend. Then he doesn't have ankle tilt in the true sense of it, but he has toe tilt. So it still balances out and does what you need it to do. You can also get up and down out of those as well from transformation, but it means he's actually you know, surprisingly well balanced in whatever shapes you want to throw him in. When it comes to accessories, this victorious bastard is packing. I mean, when you think about it, he is someone else's weapon accessories himself. He's a weapon. I mean, they're all weapons, but like, he's, he's a weapon. He's like a weapon weapon. Weapon X. No, that's someone else. As we've already seen, he comes with his shoulder guns, which, you know, I left on from the get-go because it's, it's such an iconic element to his visage. You know, you can do the shoulder pow pow thing, which is dope. And then, as was often the case, you can also stick him on his arms. Get a little bit of a sound wave-esque thing going. Have one and one. Have two and two. The choice is yours. It's like a sizzler salad bar of weapons options. Make sure you don't fill up on bread. He comes with, I don't know, the biggest gun ever. Oof. A gun so large and righteous that it has multiple paint apps and articulation. So what I really love, if you fold out the barrel all the way, there are the ports for it to just, just mount into his hip like he done did in days of yore. Mm -mm. Everybody knows your main business if you rock up with this attached to your hip. I'm, I'm not even going to unsling it. I'm just going to shoot it at you where it is. Yeah? You all thought a Marta Megatron was the first to be rocking a hip cannon. Nuh uh. This bad boy. He invented the game. And obviously, all of this accoutrement is Blast Effect compatible. So look, I totally understand that your average pointy Blast Effect needs to be made out of this softer rubber for, you know, safety purposes. But surely, no child is ever really getting their hands on this. This is some premium stuff. Surely these could have at least been made in hard plastic so they could actually shoot straight. God, it still looks very cool though, doesn't it? And uh, just on the accessory note, uh, whatever the hell this puppet master looking jabroni's name is, they're um, a pretty good, pretty good color match. So uh, if you'll if you'll forgive the indulgence, becoming man and machine power extreme. Imagine the power level in this beast, would you? Oh yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. So, by way of a comparison, let's first have a look at him alongside another big gun wielding beastie. By way of big convoy. Then let's peep him alongside his madcap creators, Wheeljack and Perceptor. You'd have thought after the Dinobots I'd have learnt my lesson. But here we are. Here he is alongside Optimus Prime, because I feel like that's a point of reference that pretty well everyone will get. Then let's take a look at the real OJ. Oh, original Victory Leo. Oh, I love this figure so much. You can see there, there's a there's a pretty overt height discrepancy between these two. Uh, Victory Leo is actually pretty much the same size as Star Saber. So, um, you know, they fairly did him dirty by doing him this small. I know he's allegedly a leader, but he's definitely more like a chunky Voyager. In parts, counts, and bits, he'd probably make it up. 
I do think it would have been nice if they'd, you know, sprung to chuck in some of those sky blue metallic accents that you see on his shoulders and his knees. They would have balanced out with his eyes and the cat eyes and stuff, and that would have been nice. I'd have liked it. I also would have liked if the white accents that we've got painted on the side of him here had have come around a little bit further just to make that a deeper V. So the trip to beast mode is not a particularly long one. Let's start by taking that off. Then you're going to bring the arms forward, turn the hands so that he's, you know, fisticuffs pugilist style, and then unfold these cat arms. Well. So what really sucks here about this is on my copy at least, this is supposed to go down to completely cover his face, but it just, I feel like if I force it any harder than I am, it's just going to snap. So it's, it's, I guess, an extra part of his mane on mine, unfortunately. Then we want to fold down the tusks and flare out this mane. Flare, flare. I feel like you can probably see where this is headed. So then what we want to do over here is come around and unhinge these two back pieces and then we're just going to collapse it down. What makes it kind of hard is you can see this tab, this port here, wants to be held in place with like this tab on the legs. So it can be a little bit of a wiggle to get it to perfectly go in. I found it helps a little bit if you do it sort of simultaneously and they feed into each other. Before you collapse those legs, unfold uh, these I don't know, tail pieces, I suppose. Square it all up and this will tab and peg together. Then we're gonna come up here and this is another piece that's a real goddamn nightmare to try and get to. It helps you fold these out the way. Yeah, fold that down, then undo the legs and they'll kind of just sort of pin into place. And uh, that's, that's basically our boy's lion mode. I can see why they never showed us photos from this angle. This, this does not look great. This is not a good looking beast. But it works in that sort of Predacons way where it's a real G1-y looking beast. So, you know, you forgive it. I don't know, I find I forgive a lot of it. Especially, once you go and get this giant gun, fold that barrel down to get this peg. So this is going to slot and peg over this nubbin here. There we go. And look at that. I mean, come on, it is hard to argue with the zoids of that. You don't care about the rest because of the ordinance that he's packing. That is just phenomenal. So, as you could probably guess, articulation in this beast mode is relatively limited. You get the same articulation that you got from the arms, sands, any kind of wrist tilt. The head, you can get the tiniest little bit of left and right out of, so we can throw some looks around the place. The back legs have like a, a soft setting for these bits, but you can move them, you can bend the knee, and that back foot has some tilt. So, you know, he can, he can leap at peeps. I like it. It is what it is. It's more or less what he looked like. All right, now, the trip to vehicle mode is even shorter, arguably, than the trip was to robot mode. So, unwrench this unruly thing. Turn around his guns. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this head would look a lot less awful if I was able to close this black flap. I'm still not game enough to push it and test it, because if that piece snaps, that's a pretty integral element that is uh, cooked. So, um. I'm, I'm gonna turn it around, so at least it's a cat face. That's something, right? Then you wanna fold the arms around further and get them. So he's kinda doing a cat push-up, I guess, is the best way to put it. Then we can unfold the wings, and then the top of the wing will tab in to the top of the arm, hypothetically, if you got it in just the right position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-mm, tidy. Then we're gonna fold the leg back up, clip that toe on, I believe it wants to sit around like this. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Enter Giant Gunnicus. So we're gonna fold that down. We're gonna use this articulation to fold that up. I guess we could fold that too if we really wanted. Then this gun goes up this way, and on top it's got that notch where these little peg bits are gonna go, hypothetically. And then this piece is also gonna go in there. So it's a, it's a two-fold operation. There we go. I mean, I guess that makes it slightly more aerodynamic. All right, so like objectively, yeah, this is this is a bad mode. This is no good. This is about as thought out as Star Saber's base mode was. But this is this is what he looked like in the show, more or less. He was a flying brick. 
He was a gun on wing. I don't know. It's not much in terms of being an autonomous spaceship, but if you sort of think of it more in terms of at the end of Avengers when Tony used his Godmaster bracelets to summon that airborne armor delivery system, that that's what he is. He's an airborne armor delivery system with the added bonus of being a gun on wings. I will say this, obviously Perceptor and Wheeljack are not aeronautics experts. They probably should have enlisted Ace McCloud. So yeah, this has been a wild ride. This is where we're going to leave it, but because part three, oh yeah, we're bringing Star Saber back into the mix. Armor pants. So uh, what do we think? Do you like him as much as I have? Do you think that clearly a lot was sacrificed to get a clean looking victory saber combined mode? Have you got him? Are you going to get him? Let me know in the comments below and let's get nerdy with it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Go back and check out part one if you want to see Star Saber in action. We'll be back for part three where we're going to get the two of these combined and have a look at them together. Oh yeah. Let's say go!